Hey guys, Heather Lynn here, owner of Lobo Designs. Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to pop in today and give you a sneak peek of the designs I'll be going over. So I'm going to hand letter two separate designs in Procreate for iPad. I'm then going to export them both as transparent background PNGs. One of them, I'm gonna bring into Lightburn and engrave directly onto a coaster. No tracing needed. The other, I'm gonna bring into Adobe Illustrator, trace it, turn it into a vector, and then I'll bring it into Lightburn so that I can cut it on my laser. So if you're ready to get started, so am I. I'll see you on the inside. Our first step of the project is going to start in Procreate for iPad. So open your iPad, open Procreate, and this is just a blank screen size canvas that I'll be using. Today, I'm going to be using my Lobo script brush. If you don't have access to this brush, it is in my Etsy shop, or you can sign up for my subscriber list and get it for free. I will also be lettering in true black today. So you'll wanna go all the way down to the bottom and just double tap down here somewhere at the bottom of this circle, and it will turn to default true black. We're going to be lettering on this canvas. I'm going to letter the word Sarah or the name Sarah. And then I'm also going to letter that S with the Smith in the middle of it. So I will time lapse this so it doesn't take too long. If you wanna know how to use any of these brushes or these products, please check out some of my other videos, but I'm gonna speed this up just to make it a little bit quicker for time saving purposes. Now, once we have all of this lettered or drawn out, we're going to separate these. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna create a, a separate layer. I'm gonna merge all of these together into one. I'm gonna lasso this one and I'm gonna make sure I have it selected. Then I'm gonna three finger swipe down, I'm gonna cut and I'm gonna go up here onto layer five, three finger swipe down again and I'm going to paste. So now these are on separate layers and how I'm going to export these is I'm going to do one layer at a time. So I'm going to take this one off first I'm going to go to the Sarah layer. I'm going to highlight this, make it larger. I'm going to turn off my magnetics. And then I'll go over to here. I'm going to turn off the background color. Up here, I'm going to export as a PNG and I'm going to airdrop that to my iMac. So I'm going to airdrop to my iMac. I'm going to wait until that goes through, it says that it's sent, and we'll go back. So now we're going to go back to this one. I'm going to go into my layers, uncheck this one, check that one. So we have this one showing. I'm going to make it, whoop, I'm going to highlight that layer, make it a little bit bigger. And then we're also going to export this one as a PNG as well. So now these are two separate PNGs because we're going to do two separate things with them. We're going to do the first one in Adobe Illustrator as a trace and the second one in Lightburn as a engrave only. So I will catch you over on my iMac for the rest of the project. Okay, and here we are in Adobe Illustrator. I am going to start out with the Sarah that we lettered in Procreate for iPad. I am going to import that into the canvas that we're working on here. I have a 12 by 20 artboard as I usually do because those are the sheets that I work on for my laser. If you want a specific size artboard, you would change that accordingly. Again, please check out my other tutorials if you're not familiar with the Adobe Illustrator interface. But let's get started on this design. We're going to hit Command or Control Shift P as in place. We're going to find what we just exported from Procreate, which I believe I put in my, here it is. So I named them Sarah and Smith just to make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna pick the Sarah file and I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to tap place. When I'm inside the Adobe Illustrator interface, I'm going to click anywhere to place this. I usually do this right at the top corner just so it imports right directly into the center of my screen. And there we have it. It's a little bit larger than we need it, but we're gonna trace it first before we resize because then it will be in an SVG form, which is scalable vector graphic, which means that we won't lose the quality when we resize it. So let's take care of that first, get it out of raster and into vector. In order to vectorize this, all we need to do is image trace it. And if you wanna know the difference between raster and vector, it's pretty simple even though it seems complicated. I'm gonna zoom all the way in on this photo so that you can see what I mean. Raster works in pixels. So if I zoom all the way in here, you can see that this has a grayscale that's working in pixels to define the line on either side of this design. When you look at these pixels, it's not easy if you would think about it, it wouldn't be easy for a laser to follow this path as there would be a ton of nodes in each little pixel here. So what image tracing does is image tracing follows the line around here, almost like tracing your hand to paper, letting your laser know which path to follow when it's cutting for the project. So I'm going to zoom out here and then I'll show you what it looks like after we trace it so you can see the difference. So we're going to go over here 
into the trace panel and we're just going to make sure that we have our design selected and we're going to click trace. It doesn't look like much happens here, but we're going to do a couple more steps before I show you the new outline. You're going to go up here into the object menu. You're going to click object and then you're going to go into expand. Make sure that your window looks like mine and click OK. And then while this is still selected, you're going to click Y on your keyboard. That's going to activate the magic wand tool, or you can also click on the tool, which is over here. If you don't know how to find this tool, or if you don't see this tool in your left side menu, don't forget, you can always go into the little ellipsis down here at the bottom and edit your toolbar. So while we have this selected, we're going to click anywhere in this white area, and then we're going to hit delete on our keyboard. And now this is vectorized. And what I mean by that is I'm going to zoom back in to where we were. And if you see, those lines that were once blurry are now completely clean. And if I change this into outline mode, you'll be able to see the path that the laser will follow. So there are our paths. And what you'll see here is the laser will know exactly where to turn, where to cut, based on all of the little anchor points that it picked up during that trace. So as of right now, this could be cut out, but we're gonna do a couple more steps to get that keychain ready for the design that we're going to use on the project today. First things first, we're gonna get out of outline mode and back into preview mode. You can do that by going up here into the view menu and you can switch back and forth between outline mode and preview mode by going to outline or by hitting command or control Y on your keyboard, depending if you're a Windows or Mac user. So I'm going to resize this Sarah to two inches wide. So I'm gonna go over here into my transform panel. I'm gonna make sure that I have width highlighted. I'm gonna make sure that we have the maintain width and height proportions also checked off so we make sure we don't skew this and we're going to do two inch width so i'm going to go to enter it gets a little smaller so i'm going to hold down option or alt and zoom in and then what i'm going to do is i am going to make an offset of this so i'm going to take this sarah i'm going to make a copy command or control c as in copy i'm going to go up into object up here object path offset path This works for me right now. I can use this size. I don't need anything specific. If you wanted it at a specific width, you could set that here. The joins I usually set to rounded just to make sure that I don't have any jagged edges. Again, entirely up to you. Click OK when you're ready. And then what I do here is I highlight everything together. I go over here into the Pathfinder menu and I click Unite. And then I change this over into a stroke by hitting Shift X or you can go over here and click this little arrow up at the top to swap your fill in stroke. So now that this is set, I'm gonna make this our cut path by changing it to a red cutout, which is a red outline. And remember when we made a copy of Sarah, we're now gonna bring that back. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control F as in front to bring Sarah back into place. So now we have our outline here, which is for cutting our inside here for the design, which will be for cutting as well, but you could also use this for engraving. And I'm gonna change Sarah to a cutout if we need it, just by hitting the eyedropper tool. That is also over here in the menu. And you can highlight what you wanna change it to. So Sarah right now is set to black fill. I wanna change it to a red stroke. So I am going to highlight right there. And now I have both of my shapes for cutting out. So I'm gonna move Sarah up here and I'm gonna create the hole for cutting out for the keychain hardware. I personally use keychain thingies from Riley Black Designs, Crystal Aguila, shout out. I use these because they're so much easier than jump rings, and I'll show you a picture at the end to see uh, what they look like, but they are a time saver, and if you're offering to put your hardware on for your customers, absolutely recommend it. So what I use is a smaller hole and a larger hole, and I merge them together. So the larger hole, I use 0 0.42, so I'm gonna use the ellipse tool, or L on your keyboard. It's also over here in the menu, it looks like an oval, if you don't see it, don't forget things are hidden inside this little arrow tool here. You can just press down to highlight the other tools um, that you see here. We are going to be using the ellipse tool. I'm just going to click one time on my artboard. I'm going to make sure that I have the constrain width and height set to linked. So we make sure that we're making a perfect circle. And like I said, I'm going to do 0.2 and 0.2. We're going to click OK. And then I'm going to do one more. Click. I'm going to do 0.2. 4.2 and 0.42. Now we have these two circles together, so we're going to highlight them together. And up here, we're going to align horizontally and we're going to align vertically. So we're going to one and one. 
And then I make these a compound path. So you can go into here and just make compound path. It's a right click, make compound path, or you can do command eight and make it a compound path. So now they are one. And the last step here that you're going to do is you're gonna drag this over to the desired location. You're gonna select these both together and then you're gonna go over here into Pathfinder and you're gonna do Unite one more time. So now you have your cutout for your keychain backer. You have your cutout for the second layer of your keychain and this is ready to be copied, Control C and pasted, Control V into Lightburn. And then we can send it over to our laser. So we're going to cut this on our laser in a bit, but first I wanna go over how to create that raster design that doesn't need to be vectorized if you're going to just be engraving it in Lightburn. My favorite part about Procreate for iPad is that you can actually letter directly into Procreate for iPad and drop it into Lightburn and engrave it and not really have to do much else. The only time you need extra editing is when you wanna vectorize it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do Command I, or I can go up into the file menu and do Import or Command or Control I if you have Windows or Mac. I'm going to go into Downloads. I'm going to find that Smith PNG that I wanted to use, and I'm going to bring that into the Lightburn interface. Right now, you'll see this comes over as an image up here in your right-hand corner. What you would normally see there is either fill or line. Image works just as a fill. You're just gonna set your settings differently because it's reading a PNG and it's not reading a vector. So what it's reading is this entire image at once. It's not reading each individual path and anchor as it would for a vector. So what you're going to do here is you're going to size it accordingly. My coaster is about three and a half inches around. So I'm gonna make sure that this design is roughly, let's say two and a half inches around and see how that goes. So we're gonna go up here into the width and the height. Again, you want to make sure that the lock is locked to make sure that you're maintaining your width and height proportions. We're going to go through here. We're going to do 2.5. Now this is small. We're going to just zoom in a little bit. And the way that I'm going to be originating this on my laser is center. So I want to make sure that I have my job origin set to center so the red dot knows where to frame from. And this is ready to go. So we can actually send this directly over to frame it and engrave it. It's that simple. So now we're going to bounce over to the laser and I'll run you through my process of how to either cut the layered acrylic keychain out or engrave the olive wood coaster. I'll see you in my workshop. And we're back in my workshop. I want to show you what we're using for today's projects. So we have a olive wood coaster that I'm going to be using for the raster engrave, just the basic engrave, basic coaster. We're going to do that on one side. Then I'm going to be using keychain thingies with keychain hardware. So we're going to be attaching that to two pieces of acrylic. Now, for the acrylic, this is 3M adhesive. I use this instead of glue. Highly recommend. It's not cheap, but it's worth it. Get you some. For the last piece, we'll move this over. Here's our acrylic. We have iridescent acrylic. It's black. It's white on one side, it's iridescent on the other, and then this is matte hot pink acrylic. This is the one that I have backed with 3M, so we can use this as glue. So we're gonna cut the name out of here, the backer out of here, and I think we're ready. Let's go. Don't forget to turn on your blower. Project one is complete. I love the look of olive wood, wood green. It's gorgeous. Let's move on to the laser cut key tape. When I'm cutting acrylic, I raise it off the bed with near medium magnets. I don't know if I'm saying that properly, but these are the magnets. I keep them attached to my bed all the time. So I will have these here and I'm just gonna slide them over to where I need them. Let's get the answer out of the way. We're gonna move this here, here. I tend to make a square room if I can, just somewhere I can rest so that it goes right off of the bed here to avoid flashback. Next, I'm gonna focus. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna bring the gantry back over, make sure that we're over the material in a solid spot. I'm gonna go down to autofocus. The bed is raising, so then it's gonna focus to this material and then it'll lower back down to the focal point. 
I'm going to move the red dot over to where I want it. For this design, I'm going to be origining at top right, so that'll work. This is the front of my sheet, so I'm going to be cutting it face side up, and we are ready to cut. I'm going to turn on my blower. We're going to be using the same setup for the hot pink acrylic. Just don't forget that we have 3M on the back here, so I'm going to be cutting right up here at the top right. I'm going to slide this underneath up here. I'm going to add another two magnets for the left hand side so that we have it balanced properly and it's not leaning. I'm going to line it up on my bed. Again, we're going to focus. I'm going to make sure that you don't skip this step because this is important based on every single sheet including if you have 3M on the back. We're going to move that dot to where we need it to be and turn on our blower and cut. Okay, this piece is fragile. Look at that line. Woo! Okay, so we are going to, this is our backer. This is the front. We're gonna put this together. So we have our keychain thingy and our key ring. So I'm going to peel the masking off the front of this so you can see the iridescence. And when I am peeling acrylic, for the most part, I really like to use um, Gorilla Tape to weed, but when it's something with a film on top, like iridescent, I'm not feeling it because it can get scratched. And this is such a pretty color. See the, ooh, ooh, so it's like yellow if you look at it from this angle. Pardon my ugly nails because I'm a crafter. Yellow and then it turns into like a peach, purple. There's my phone, hello. And then it turns into a blue, it's gorgeous. And we have paper masking on the back as well that I'm going to peel off. I'm going to try not to touch this right now while I get the masking off of Sarah. I am going to use Gorilla Tape for this one, so I will be right back. Gorilla Tape is glorious for weeding delicate items. So I'm just going to press this down to the back here. And then we're going to peel it off. I'm going to do this off camera so I can see if it's stuck to the table. Okay, Sarah is weeded. Look how tiny and fragile. We still have the glue on the back, so we're gonna peel that off now. You can see the 3M, you just peel it off like a sticker. Peels right off the back, usually all in one piece. There you go. Now we're gonna take this. So now we have the double layered keychain. And then the keychain thingy is perfect because you can just put it right on here, like that. You loop this on, like that. And then you just squeeze these two together. And then you have your keychain. So pretty. And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel free to join us in the Glow Create group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I'll holla at you later.